Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Olena and I'm an English teacher in Busan, South Korea. I've been living here for about a year. I've learned that there are some very, very essential apps to have while you live here, especially when you don't speak the language and you've never lived here before. If you're about to move to Korea and you don't know the language, or maybe you do know the language, but you need to know some apps that are essential to living here, uh, then just keep on watching. Uh, so there are some apps that I recommend you download before you even land in Korea because you might need to use them uh, soon after, a, after you arrive, before you would get your bank card, before you would get your phone number. Just a quick FYI, there are a lot of apps here that are very essential that you will use a lot, but they do require you to have a Korean bank account and a Korean phone number. So before you get those, let me share with you what apps you should download before you even go to Korea. So the very first app, it's actually not Korean, it's the only app that is not Korean, and that is Google Voice. So when I used to live in Morocco, I knew that Google Voice was something that people used to talk with their families. I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to download it because I was in Morocco. So the only place that you can download this app is while you're in the US. And what is so great about this app is A, it's free, B, you could just use your Gmail to register, and C, you get a US phone number. So your family can call you and uh, your friends can call you and they can text you and you can use it if you ever like apply for anything online that is US based or just like anything you do online that would require you to have a US phone number, you can use the Google Voice number. I have done this so many times and some of these other apps that you can use to make phone calls, they're just not as effective and there's so many ads and there's limits and you have to purchase credits. There's a lot of like US websites that won't accept phone numbers from their app, those apps because they can somehow like detect that those are apps and not legitimate US phone numbers. So Google Voice has been the easiest app to communicate with my family. They can send me text messages and they can send me photos, which is really, really great. And I can call them and it's all free of charge, which is really awesome. The other app that I use multiple times a day, even while I'm teaching, and my students even say they know he's my best friend. He's a boy, I don't know why, uh, but that is Papago. So Papago is basically like Google Translate, but it's better because it's specifically for Korean and English, so the translations are a little bit more accurate. There are sometimes like translations that are not accurate, but it will at least tell you like the context of what that word would be used at so you could choose whatever the right word is. And what I use it all the time for is like when I'm traveling and there's a sign that looks important and it's in Korean and I have no idea what it's saying, I could just take a picture of the sign, it'll scan it and automatically translate what the sign is saying. I can also use it with screenshots, any kind of photos in my phone. I can copy and paste like test text messages uh, that are in my teachers group so I can understand what they're saying or just when I'm teaching students and there's some things that I just cannot explain in simple English. I've also used it a lot in stores when I'm shopping for something or just like to talk to people if I ever need any help with anything I just use it and you can also use your voice with that as well. So I really, really like Papago. I think you should download it before you even get to Korea because who knows? Like, you might come in contact with someone who doesn't speak any English on your way home or to your new home. Papago is gonna be just a lifesaver. Okay, and the next two apps, they're both similar apps. They are map apps uh, that you should definitely download. I'm not sure if you can download them uh, before you get to Korea, but they're basically like Google Maps, but they're only used in Korea. Google Maps doesn't work here. Like. There's some, there's few locations that are found in Google Maps, but they don't really give you directions. It's just like not as useful. It's not as accurate as neighbor maps. 
and Cocoa Maps. So those are the two uh, map apps that you should download. Why do you need two map apps instead of just one? Well, the difference is Navery Maps uses a lot more English. So if I'm searching for uh, restaurants, I could just type that in in English. If I'm searching for supermarkets, I could type that in in English. Also restaurant names, I could type it in in English. The directions are in English. And not only that, but like if you use public transportations, public transportation, um, then it's going to show you the stops in English. So if you live like in a bigger city like I do in Busan, if and you're riding a bus or a subway, the stops will be announced in both Korean and English. On the subway, it's additionally, I think, Chinese and Japanese. But what I do is I just use a neighbor map and I match it with the English stop that's announced. So I can keep track of the stops that I have to pass in order to get to my final stop. And I just really like neighbor maps. It's just so much more English, like even on the map, there's a lot more English than there is Korean. So to me, I prefer neighbor maps. And of course you could save lo locations just like you can in Google Maps. The other map is Kakao Maps, which is something that more people use. Koreans use Kakao Maps a lot more. And you know, people who have been here for longer, they use Kakao Maps a lot more. There is a lot more Korean, and if you are using it to navigate somewhere and you're riding a bus or a subway, the stops that you will see in the lineup to your final stop, they're gonna be in Korean. So that's kind of why I don't prefer to use it. But what I like about Kakao Maps is that it is a little bit more accurate. Um, for example, there are supermarkets that are closed like every other Sunday. If Sunday is your shopping day, how are you gonna know if it's open or not? Use Kakao Maps. Actually today I used Neighbor Maps to see if Home Plus, which is like just a big supermarket uh, close to my house, if it was open and Neighbor Maps did not say that it was closed today. But Kakao Maps did say that it was closed today. So Kakao Maps is a little bit more accurate, I would say. And what I really like about Kakao Maps, which Neighbor Maps also does, but I feel like it's a little bit more accurate, is if you're waiting for a bus or a subway train, you will know exactly when it arrives to the second. So it tells you exactly like how long you have to wait for the next bus or the next train. Next app that you should definitely download, and you can download that without having a Korean number first, and it's Kakao Talk. Kakao Talk is basically like WhatsApp, any of your like messaging apps that you might use to talk to people instead of text messaging. Uh, that is something that is used here in Korea. As you notice, there's a lot of Kakao stuff. Kakao is like, I guess, like the Google of Korea, but there's also Naver, which people use as well. Kakao has just a lot more services that it provides. Anyways, getting back to the topic, Kakao Talk is like everybody uses Kakao Talk. It's like just your simple messaging app. As I said, you can do phone calls. So before you have your Korean number, you can use it to call people you know here in Korea. Uh, you can send uh, videos, you can send uh, pictures, and yeah, it's just like covers all the basics. But as I said, most people use Kakao Map, Kakao Talk. Uh, people don't use text messaging much at all. Let's say you get to Korea, maybe you have to quarantine, uh, or maybe you have to wait some time before you get a Korean card and a Korean phone number. There are some apps that you can use that do not require you to have a Korean card. And the first one is for ordering food. So, you know, if you just get here, you don't have any groceries and maybe you're a little bit intimidated to go grocery shopping first and you're just trying to get settled in. I totally get the, that. Um, so there is an app called Shuttle. Shuttle is like Uber Eats. Uh, the only drawback with Shuttle is that there's very little variety. Like 
There's not as many choices as there would be with other apps that use a Korean card, unfortunately. Um, but if you are like desperate for a meal to just be delivered to you, then you could definitely use shuttle maps. Like you just order from different restaurants and uh, place your order using your US card and the order will be delivered. And it's all in English. Yes. So guys, we're gonna change things up for a second and we are going to take a quick pause for today's sponsor, me. If you're not aware, I do have a store called mydesignmuse.shop. It used to be an Etsy store, but for some reason the account got suspended and there's no communication and no information as to why and how I can fix it. So right now we are on Instagram. So the store itself, it's not like an official Instagram store, but if you like what you see, on the Instagram, then please message me and we can figure out the information and I can mail you the goodies and inspiring things that are in my store. So my store is basically travel inspired accessories. Um, and as we can see right there, it is a graphic tee and the quote is traveling. It leaves you speechless, then turns you into a storyteller by Ibn Batuta, who is one of the most famous, if not the most famous Eastern explorer. And he's not very well known in the Western world. And as you can see, this graphic is super dope. Um, I designed it along with a freelance artist in Egypt. And you can also see that the route that Ibn Battuta took, he went through all of the Eastern hemisphere, basically. And you can even see some of the most famous like cities that he stopped at. There's like Beijing, Delhi, Baghdad, Cairo, Singapore. And that's what I want. Like the purpose of my stuff is to inspire people and and it's like art and travel and inspiration all in one. And I'm hoping to have some more other stuff that's really inspiring. But yeah, please have a look at my site. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks. The next two apps for ordering anything is, well, the first one is called iHerb. And that's a really, really great app if you are into like alternative foods if that makes sense. <laughs> so like gluten-free type stuff, like specialty foods, uh, basically vegan, gluten-free stuff. They do ship from California, so it does take about a week to get your stuff. I've ordered a lot of stuff and you can actually watch my video on my iHerb unboxing somewhere over here. And you can see just some of the stuff that you can get. Um, what I got was MTC oil. Is that what it is? I kind of forgot what it's called, but... And then I got almond flour, flaxseed, cacao bits, cacao nibs. <laughs> and then there's also some beauty stuff, which is really nice. And the prices are just really, really great. So, as I said, if you're into like specialty foods or just specialty beauty, vegan type stuff, health food, definitely check out iHerb. The third app that you might want to use if you want to order anything, it's G Market Global. They don't require a Korean card either. And it's just basically kind of like an Amazon. You can order all kinds of different stuff there and they have US and uh, Korean prices on there so you can compare. It is in English, which is really great. You can put in your information in English and you can set it to shipping to Korea so you can see the shipping prices right away. It's a pretty great app. The prices are a little bit higher than uh, using other Korean apps, but if you really, really need something, like for example, some people may need an, a mattress topper because when they moved to Korea, their mattress was just horrible. They might just wanna use a mattress topper. Just anything that you might need right away and you just can't really wait for it. So the next apps you should download once you get a Korean credit card and a Korean phone number. So first and foremost is Coupong. Coupong is the Amazon of Korea. You can order anything and everything that your heart desires on there. There is specialty items, there's food items, there's even uh, some gluten-free items, which is really cool. There's frozen food that you can order that sometimes can be cheaper than your regular supermarket. 
uh, or like just foods that you cannot find uh, at the regular supermarket, such as frozen fruit and some frozen vegetables. I've also found some frozen chicken that is cheaper than getting regular chicken at the store. I've just gotten so many different things. Ring light that I'm using now to make this video, I got it from Coupon and I think it was like 25 bucks. I also got this blue kind of background light that you see here and it was about $10. So the prices are really great. Uh, shipping is really cheap or sometimes it's free if you have like a larger order. The only thing I do need to say and forewarn you is that Coupon has been kind of, um, it's been getting a little bit into trouble because it kind of has a reputation for underpaying its staff or for staff just working at too long of hours or abnormal hours because they basically deliver throughout the night. So yeah, they've been in the news for that. <laughs> so I just get stuff there that I absolutely cannot get anywhere else. The next essential app that you absolutely need and it is a lifesaver. And I waited way too long to get it and I wish I could have gotten it. But you just need so much help downloading it because there's just a lot of loops and holes you have to go through. And that is Kakao Taxi. Kakao Taxi is like Uber. Uh, why do you need Kakao Taxi? Why can't you just use public transportation? It's cheaper, right? Well, what if you're out with friends? And what if you're like having dinner and it's late or you're just hanging out at the beach or something and you're far from home and uh, the subway is not running anymore? How are you gonna get home, right? First, before I go on to explain this app, you should know that subways stop running a little bit before midnight. So the last train is usually somewhere between 11.45 and 12. Um, so after that, you're done. I think it goes the same for buses. It's about the same time for buses. And both start running back up at around 5.30ish. Like anywhere from 5.15 to 5.45 is when the first bus or metro starts running. And the reason why I prefer to use Kakao Taxi versus just flagging down a taxi is because I do not have to communicate with a taxi driver. <laughs> if you don't know Korean, it is, yeah, like just imagine, you know, having to tell your taxi driver where you live, giving him directions. You can use Papago to write your address down. It's just a lot more back and forth and it's kind of exhausting. <laughs> uh, so I would rather use Kakao Taxi because I could just log in my address and I can use English as well on Kakao Taxi. I could just, you know, use it the same way as an Uber. The taxi driver knows exactly where you're going. And why is it better than a taxi is because there is no negotiation on the price. Kakao Taxi already gives me the price and the driver uses the meter rather than trying to negotiate with me like they do if you don't use Kakao ta Taxi. I have a friend, uh, Michelle, <laughs> if you're watching this, hey Michelle. The way that she uses Kakao Taxi, it's like, I guess there's a negotiation period and it just sounds like a headache because the taxi drivers will ask way over the normal price and there's just so many back and forth conversations. And if you don't know Korean, it's just very stressful. When you first move to Korea, you might want to understand how the subway system works and how the bus system works. Just to get like an overall understanding and view of them. Um, so I recommend downloading the Kakao, Kakao. Cacao Subway app um, because then you can, with the Cacao Subway app, you can see like the whole subway system and all the lines and you can see all the stops. So you kind of have a general idea of how the stops run and it's just really helpful in the beginning. Um, after you get comfortable with the subway lines and you kind of have an idea of the different routes, then you can switch on over to Naver Maps or Kakao Maps to uh, get more exact directions of where you wanna go. Sometimes taking a bus is faster. 
there were some places that I took a subway to for a long period of time and then I logged it in to Naver Maps and actually taking a bus was way faster. Such as my orthodontist at, uh, office, that's what it is. My orthodontist at office, I would take the subway to and then I have to walk about 10 to 12 minutes to get there and just randomly I pulled it up into my map, my neighbor maps, and it pulled it up as a bus. The bus is the fastest way. And guess how much I have to walk to the orthodontist office if I use a bus? One minute. <laughs> Another website that you might want to use to order food and household items is ssg.com app. If you are really uncomfortable using coupon just because of, you know, all the news with uh, their employees, then that is a good alternative. I haven't really ordered any, anything from there, but my friend says that she can use her US card and placing orders. And there's so many different things that you can order, household food, frozen food, fresh food. So it's a really useful app. And she says that she just orders all of her extra groceries there. Um, I believe this map, this app is connected to eMart, which is like a really big supermarket here. If you do want to order food and you want to have a little bit more variety and you have a Korean card, you should definitely download the Coupon Eats app. The Coupon Eats app is basically like Uber Eats and it has a lot of variety, a lot of different restaurants that are close to you. When I first moved here last year, it was all in Korean, so I had to use Papago. But now I've noticed that there's a lot more English on the app. So I think they're like kind of switching over to English, it, maybe if they suspect that I speak English or somehow. But I've noticed that like they use a lot more English on the app, which is wonderful. And you can search for the type of cuisine that you're in the mood for. Uh, you put in your address there, your card information. And uh, ordering is like super easy. Ordering food is so easy. And what's great is that when you place the order, you can track of exactly what's happening. You can track when the restaurant receives the order, when they begin to prepare the order, when the order is ready, when the driver picks up the order. And what I love about it is I can see exactly where the driver is. I can see his routes, where he is on the road, approximately in how many minutes he will be in my house and I can give him directions as to how I want the food delivered. Um, so it's really great and they deliver really, really fast and it's just lovely. I love Coupon Eats. And I have uh, two apps left uh, for two different uses. The first app is for news. Uh, if you really want to keep up with what's happening in Korea, especially because of the coronavirus and how things are always changing and restrictions are always changing, I definitely recommend downloading the Korea Times app. Uh, now there are, there are two, okay? I only have the Korea Times app, but there's also the Korean Herald that people use that is also an English language, uh, like a newspaper well, online newspaper. <laughs> so you could choose which one you prefer. Maybe download both, Korea Times and Korea, the Korean Herald or the Korea Herald or Korea Herald. Uh, I don't exactly know which one, uh, but they're both really useful in just getting your news. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy using them to get updates on what's happening in Korea. And last but not least, and maybe one of the most important, is learning the Korean language. Now, a little backstory on me. I did start learning some of the letters, but I got caught up in like so many things in my life. And just with my schedule and stuff, I honestly haven't been giving it any time like I should to learn the language. But if you're really motivated and it's of course obviously useful to know the language if you're gonna live here. The app that I really, really enjoyed and it's perfect for be beginners and it's free for the like the initial few lessons, it's called Memorize. And what I really, really liked about it is that for example, when I was learning uh, the alphabet, they have videos of native speakers pronouncing each letter 
And when you do like your reviews and your little quizzes and stuff, they'll even have a different person pronouncing the same letter. So it's not always ex gonna be the exactly the same video for each letter or word or phrase. And that's really nice because then you can hear like different pronunciations um, in their videos. So it's a lot more interactive and it's really easy to learn through that app. The way that they teach you is really simple, really easy. It starts really basic, like for someone who literally knows zero Korean. And if I ever get back into learning Korean, I will definitely use this app. All right, guys, so that concludes my list of apps that you must have when living in Korea. So if you found this video useful or if you think that somebody else would also benefit from this video, please share it. Please give it a thumbs up as well. So then this video can get out to more people and it can be helpful for more people. And comment below, uh, are there any other apps that maybe I missed? Or are you moving to Korea? If you are, I'd be happy to answer any questions. You know, just give my, perspect give my perspective on things. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.